Sometimes when people ask me about my journey to Islam, I describe the journey as from the Vatican to Al-Azhar, because it, it's funny really, a, a, a northern boy from a little town in Lancashire, from ordinary Roman Catholic parents, ordinary just working people, that I should end up now as a Muslim, traveling all over the world speaking about Islam, the author of eight books about Islam, uh, I, I now I write for three newspapers in Egypt, and really, the, the talk really has full meaning from the Vatican to Al-Azhar because I trained in, in Rome for the priesthood, but now I'm actually a lecturer at Al-Azhar University. When I left the priesthood, I had no plan whatever of changing my religion. I was perfectly happy as a Christian. I had no problem with the church or with the Bible or with the bishop. The problem I had was with the job. And to be truthful, the problem was that my heart felt lonely. So Allah Almighty brought me out of the priesthood through using my heart. My heart felt lonely. And the, the way I like to describe it is I had no plans to change my religion. I wasn't looking for Islam at all. But Islam, over the next year and a half, came looking for me. You know, if you've never been a priest, you don't know what it's like. It's like a death and a divorce and your house burning down all rolled into one. It's a big deal. So I felt very low and I wanted a holiday, I wanted to get away. So I looked for the cheapest holiday I could find and the cheapest holiday was to go to Egypt. Now I knew nothing about Egypt. Camels, pyramids, sand. Oh, and one problem, Muslims. There were Muslims in Egypt. And I honestly, I seriously thought, if I go on holiday to Egypt, these Muslims might capture me. Because the television told me that Muslims are violent and they're, you know, they're all terrorists and stuff. I went to Egypt and my introduction to Islam wasn't from some big sheikh giving a talk. It wasn't from watching a television program on an Islamic channel or reading a book about Islam or even reading the Noble Quran. The first Muslim I ever met in my life was a little boy in the street cleaning shoes. And that little lad, I walked past him from my hotel one morning and he greeted me, he looked at my white skin and he said to me, Assalamu Alaikum, and his face lit up. And you know, he meant that Assalamu Alaikum. And I'd lived in, in the UK for 40 years and no Muslim had ever said that to me before. No Muslim had ever said Assalamu Alaikum. And for the rest of the week on my holiday in Egypt, I passed that little boy and I learned some words in, in Arabic to say to him. I learned to say, Zayak, how are you doing? Zayak, ya Habibi. And he replied to me, Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah. Now I could talk for 20 programs about that week in Egypt, about how I learned about Islam. But the important thing is that that little boy, you know, he doesn't know I ever became Muslim. He's probably married now with kids of his own but it was through his simple introduction to me, greeting me with assalamu alaikum, that really the journey began. I know that Allah was bringing me to Islam right from my birth. I know that when I was sitting in those halls in Rome learning about church history and the Bible and Greek and all of this sort of, really I wasn't training to be a priest, I was training, in fact I was training to be talking to you today, I was training to be a Muslim. But the journey really began, Allah really started it all off by bringing me out of the priesthood and getting that little boy to spark my interest on what Islam was all about. People of faith have more in common with each other than those secular people who would do away with faith altogether. I'm here today at the very gracious invitation of His Eminence, Archbishop Gregorios of Thyatira in Great Britain, the head of the Greek Orthodox Church in the United Kingdom. And I just come to bring a greeting of peace and to bring my respects to His Eminence, the Archbishop. The work of interfaith dialogue is very precious. We may disagree on what we believe, but we can do it in a very respectful and indeed a very friendly way. I appreciate very much your work you are doing for the reconciliation Inshallah. and uh, uh, cultivation of the friendship and uh, brotherhood yes. and sisterhood yes. between all these people who belong to the same family. Yes. 
Yes. So we must not lose our faith and hope to human beings. That's right. Human beings is what should. And you're a, you're a, a, a living example of this, your, 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 your eminence. You're a living example in welcoming me, welcoming me, a Muslim, to your home as head of the Greek Orthodox Church in, 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 in these yes. islands. This house, these doors are open for everybody, particularly yes. the people of good faith and, and uh, people of good... Uh, uh, goodwill, goodwill. Okay. Mm. Mm open heart, yeah. good heart. And you, you, you celebrate again, it's, it's almost a year since I was here, yeah. you celebrate in just over a month's time, yeah. 41 years as yeah. a bishop. Yeah. 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 May Almighty God bless you. you. That's a long time to serve. Good time, my friend. Yes. This is a gift given to us from God, so mm. have to multiply it mm. Mm. in our small way. Mm. He is the boss, he is the Giver, he's the donor, don, donor, he donates. Mm, mm. When I came back from Egypt, I had no job at all. So I had to find myself a job quick or I, I couldn't eat. So I got myself a job teaching in a secondary school, teaching religion. Now, previously, you know, I taught in, in Catholic schools all my life about the Catholic religion. This was a state school. And as head of RE, I had to teach everyone about all six world religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Well, I knew about Christianity. I knew enough about Judaism to wing it in the school, but the other four I knew nothing about. So for, for the first three months or so, you know, I had to get the books out. I was teaching these boys GCSE Islam, and I knew nothing about Islam, so I had to learn and read the books and read the other religions too. And then another very important thing was that a lot of the students in this school, they were Arabs, they were Arab refugees from North Africa and the Middle East. And, and so in me teaching them, they taught me about Islam. After about nine months teaching in this school, I got to know these Muslim students very well. And you know, I'd read so much about Islam to teach them that by now I liked, I liked Islam. I, mean, I didn't want to be Muslim, but I, but I liked what I read. And I found myself in truth, you know, when I was teaching the kids about Prophet Muhammad, wasalam, I found tears coming in my eyes. And when I spoke about the five pillars of Islam, I found a lump coming in my throat. Islam was beginning to affect me. It was beginning to touch my heart. So Ramadan came and the boys came to me and they said, Sir, it's Ramadan and we've got nowhere to pray. Can we pray in your classroom? And I said, yeah, of course you, they, they said, because yours is the only room with a carpet. You see how Allah works, my, what a coincidence. My room was the only room in the school with a carpet, so the boys came to pray. And to cut a very long story short, I ended up supervising them in Ramadan praying. And I watched what they were doing. So that by the end of Ramadan, I knew how to pray. Because I watched what they were doing, you know, they were doing this now, and now they're doing this. And then as well, when they were praying, I went off to the internet and I learnt in Arabic the words they were saying. So by the end of Ramadan, I could pray as Muslims pray. And at the beginning of Ramadan, when they'd said, can we pray in your room? I said, well, I tell you what, I will fast with you. I'm not Muslim, but I will fast with you to encourage you to be good, to be good people. So by the end of that first Ramadan, I'd, I'd learned how to pray and I'd fasted for the whole month. I know I know that when I finish talking, basically it's time for you to go home. So listen very carefully and it'll be time for you to, to go off to your things. First thing I want to say is very important. You know, I could today, I could be in any country or any city in the world talking about Islam. But today, on this Friday afternoon, I find myself in London in East London Mosque. And I say to myself, Idris, why, why are you here today? Why am I talking to you today? And the answer is, I don't know why. Now, you're, what's he talking about? He doesn't know why. Well, obviously, I was asked. I didn't just turn up at the door. Someone asked me to talk to you. But why Allah wants me to talk to you today, I don't know. 
But there's one thing I know for sure. I know that when he who created the heavens and the earth and everything in between was creating the moon and the stars, he planned that I would be here with you today. He planned that you would be sitting here listening to the few words that he will say to you. Forget what I have to say. My name is Idris Taufik. You won't even remember me in two days' time. You won't remember a word I said. You know, we call ourselves Muslims. Half of us don't even get up in the morning to pray. You know, we, we, we talk. We're good at talking as Muslims. We can talk the talk. Oh, I'm Muslim. Assalamu alaikum, brother. But we all know what we're really like. You know, we know the thought, the bad thoughts we have about even our own brothers. Now, it could be that there's a boy in this hall who doesn't pray five times a day. I don't know you. And it could be that Allah Almighty brought me from Cairo and brought all of you gathered here today as the extras for what he wants to say to that one boy. He wants to say, come back. Could be there's a boy here. I mean, we didn't drop out of the sky. We live in London. And there's all kinds of temptations in London of drugs and all kinds of stuff. It could be that there's a boy here that is tempted in his heart to do stuff he shouldn't be doing. And maybe Allah has brought me today from Cairo and he's brought you from your houses for that one boy to encourage him. I live in Egypt now. I'm a lecturer at Al-Azhar University. Al-Azhar is the oldest university in the world. It's the, it's the seat of Sunni Islam. It's the highest, the highest seat of learning. Me. Me. You've been Muslim longer than I have. I, I, how old are you here? You're 11? 11? I became Muslim 11 years ago. So when you were born, we, I became, we've been Muslim the same length of time. But anyone beyond you, you're, you know more about Islam than I do because you've been Muslim longer than I have. So all I'm going to say to you, and, and now I find myself in Cairo, teaching people about Islam, teaching imams who are going to come to Britain and Canada and America and tell the world, tell the West about Islam. I find myself teaching them. SubhanAllah. After Ramadan, I decided to myself, now it's about time for you to take seriously this Islam. You know, but now I liked Muslims. I was very comfortable with Muslims and, and with this. I liked Islam itself. So I said to myself, it's time for you to go and learn some more about Islam for yourself, not to teach in the school, but for your own, your own information and your own good. So I went to Regent's Park Mosque in London, and on every Saturday afternoon they have a, a group called Islamic Circle for new Muslims, people interested in Islam, people who want to kind of refresh their knowledge of Islam. And I attended for many, many, many weeks. The very last talk came, it was given by Brother Yusuf Islam. And he gave his talk, and honestly, I, d I don't know what he talked about, I have no idea. Um, but at the end of the talk, I went to him and I said, Brother, if someone wanted to be Muslim, what would they have to do? I don't want to be, I said, but just say someone did. He said, well, Muslims believe in one God. And I said to him, well, I can honestly tell you I believe in one God. He said, and Muslims pray five times a day. I said, well, actually, I, I know how to say the prayers in Arabic. And he gave me a very strange look. And, I said, and, and, and then he said, and Muslims fast in the holy month of Ramadan. And I said, well, actually, I fasted last Ramadan. And Yusuf Islam looked me in the eyes and he said to me, brother, who are you trying to fool? You are Muslim already. Now, when he said those words, brother, who are you trying to fool? You're Muslim already. The Adan sounded for Salat al-Maghrib. Allahu Akbar. And all the brothers got up to go and pray in the prayer hall above. And I was left sitting there like a drunken man. My head was spinning round. In my mind, I could hear, you are Muslim already, who are you trying to fool? And outside, I could hear, Allahu Akbar. So I made my way up to the prayer hall and the brothers were all praying in front of me. I sat against the back wall and the sisters were up in the gallery praying. 
And the prayer began for Salat al-Maghrib. And it was as if angels beyond number just came into the mosque and, and battered my heart. And I started to cry. And I cried and I cried and I cried like a baby. And, and I said to myself, your whole life has led you to this. That nothing makes more sense that you become Muslim now. So I went to Brother Yusuf Islam and I said to me, Brother, tell me what to do. I want to be Muslim. And so he taught me how to declare the Shahada. Ashahadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashahadu anna Muhammad a Rasulullah. When I'd said that, all of the brothers in the mosque came and they, and they greeted me and congratulated me. And, and Brother Yusuf Islam said to me something very interesting. He said, what I want you to do now, brother, is go home and take a bath or a shower because he said, you in this mosque at this moment, you're the best Muslim in the mosque because you are without sin. Your declaration of Islam has forgiven all the sins of your past life. And he said, I want you to go home and feel the water washing away the sins of your life. And really, you know, we're talking about a journey to Islam. It was in that washing that the journey really began. I had become Muslim, but that was just the start. <laughs> You know, when I left the priesthood, that was the big thing. That's the thing that upset my family and my friends. That really upset them. By the time I came to embrace Islam more than a year later, you know, at the end of the day, your families love you. And so I, I went to them and I said, you know, I have become Muslim. And they accepted it without any problem, really. They didn't understand what it, what it was all about. But because my family loved me, they said, OK, we want you to be happy. In terms of my colleagues in school, you know, their, their response was extraordinary. Um, I went to the headmaster, on, I declared Islam on the Saturday. I went to Islam on the Sunday, uh, school on the Sunday and said to the headmaster, you'll never believe, but on Saturday I became Muslim. He said to me, at last, we wondered when you would. <laughs> so I don't think it was a surprise for my friends that I became Muslim at all, really. In the last five years, I've spoken in over 40 universities in the world. And one of the main audiences for my books are young, young people, young Muslims, and non-Muslims too, young professionals. Um, one of my books, for example, is called Talking to Young Muslims. And, and I, in fact, I find, I find being with young Muslims, I learn more from them than they learn from me. The good behavior, the politeness, the faith of these young Muslims I meet with, and they'd have a different image of Islam. You know, I very much believe that this is the century of Islam in the West, and that Muslims in what we might call the traditional Muslim countries have a lot to learn from Muslims in the West, because Muslims in the West now, they're very comfortable with, with democracy and freedom of speech and, and human rights and the role of women. So wherever I go, I also try to encourage sisters to get involved. You know, I've been involved in a sisters-only conference in Montreal, fantastic. East London Mosque is building a, a whole complex called the Mariam Centre just to encourage sisters. So sisters are very important to our cause. Finally, I want to end by thinking about Muslims all over the world 
who are suffering, Muslims whose lands are occupied, you know, Muslims who, who are very poor for whatever colonial reasons. And I think especially, you know, since I visited the, the Muslims from Gaza in Palestine who were injured during the Israeli onslaught on Gaza, since then I always wear a, a Palestinian flag. Wherever I go, whoever I meet, I wear this flag. So we pray today for Muslims all over the world and we pray especially for our beloved brothers and sisters in Palestine, insha'Allah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhirah hasana wa kana azab al nar. Amin, amin, amin. It's important to remember that when we accept Islam, we're not rejecting our former life. You know, we're, we're moving on. I, in, certainly in my case, I moved on from being Christian, and I let many of the things I used to believe just, they've fallen away. And I've gone from A to Z. I've completely changed. But nonetheless, those people that I, I was with all my life, I love them with all my heart. They've made the person that I am today.